Development meeting will come to order. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Moore? Alderman Villa? Here. Alderman Arnowitz? Present. Alderman Ingracia? Present. Alderman Tyus? Alderman Murphy? Alderman Spencer? Present. Chairman Boyd? Present. We have five present and we have quorum. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. The first board bill we're going to hear is Board Bill 276, sponsored by Alderman Bomer. Thank you, all knowing and powerful chairman. What we had before me, Board Bill 276, is for 2123 Marconi Avenue. This is, here's your photos uh, if you'd like to hand out the is a split-use building which uh, for most of my life has been a beauty parlor of one type or another on the first floor and an apartment on the second. Uh, it has been purchased by Mr. Robert Radisi who is a lawyer. He's going to gut rehab the building and turn it into a single-use office building for his law offices. Moving them from downtown St. Louis back to his home neighborhood of the hill. Uh, buying the property for 188,000 and putting uh, almost that much back into it. It's 1,300 square foot. There are off street parking spots already. And we're going for 10 year tax abatement. It, uh, it requires a mess to turn this back into what it was. It looks nice from the outside, but uh, it's one of those buildings that uh, just has paint upon paint upon paint upon paint <laughs> inside and uh, beauty shops uh, the plumbing is one of the larger problems. A lot of hair in the sores. They're redoing all that while also taking all the uh, five or six uh, stations out. I'm open to any questions. Okay, we'll see if there are any questions from members of the committee, Alderman Villa. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Alderman Arnowitz. Uh, no questions. Vice Chairwoman Ingracia. No questions. Alderman Spencer. Uh, so, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, so, it's right now it's taxed at $1,700 a year, is that what I saw? I, I believe so, yeah, I don't have that information. Yeah, so. Then they just re they recently purchased it, or has it been? It's been sitting vacant for about a year and a half. The last uh, lady went out of business. Uh, it was Solano Milano was the last business in there. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but it is closed. Uh, it had been on the market uh, and was pretty hard sell because of the the beauty parlor setup. If somebody if you didn't want to run a beauty parlor, uh, so it was one or the other. Uh, the, you know, no central air, no things, all that stuff had to be put in. It's an old old. My neighborhood has some wonderful people living in it, but it has some of the oldest property that uh, hasn't been kept up for a while. So then uh, uh, the owner then recently purchased it with the intention of doing a full rehab? Yes, yeah, Bob, Mr. Radisi, who is a lawyer, has a law firm down here, Horace Radisi, uh, was moving the firm to the hill. Uh, and they're gutting, you know, gut rehab to complete inside to, to put their offices in. I believe they have three lawyers uh, plus the, the, their staff. So it'll be a two-story. Okay, correct. Two-story law office. Yes. Great. Great. Okay, that's all I have. Thank, right. you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll move on for one question. Is, is this a corner? No, it is not. Okay. If you, I believe there's a. I have a site map. Oh, if, I see. Okay. okay. Um, and there is an apartment upstairs, right? Uh, but that is going to be turned into office space. The whole building will be law offices. Okay. Lawyers need a lot of room for paperwork and. If you have business partners, sometimes you don't always want to see them. It's kind of set up <laughs> like um, Milo's, huh? <laughs> That's down the street. Um, I'll entertain a motion to pass Board Bill 276 out of committee with a due pass recommendation. So moved. It's, Seconded. it's been moved and seconded. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Villa? Aye. Alderman Arnowitz? Aye. Alderman Ingracia? Aye. Alderman Spencer? Aye. <clears throat> Chairman Boyd? Aye. We have five ayes and zero noes. 
Okay. Board Bill 276 passes out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Thank you for your time and consideration. I see Alderman Ogilvie. In, uh, do you have a board bill? Yes, sir. Okay. Next board bill we'll hear is Board Bill 244, sponsored by Alderman Ogilvie. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Board Bill 244 is a bill for five years of tax abatement on a residential property, 1243 Graham Avenue in the Clayton Tam area of Dogtown. Uh, this property was uh, in serious disrepair, and uh, the only way to ever move somebody new in, in here would be a substantial um, investment. So. Um, and in fact, uh, th this, this property I was a little worried at some point the city was going to have to uh, take this one down. I had innumerable neighbor complaints uh, about this. So it's a hole in the roof, tree growing out of the roof, um, an unsafe tree in the front yard, which has since been removed. Um, and uh, owner's doing a full gut rehab, uh, and we'll put it on the market. We'll see if members of the committee have any questions. Alderman Villa. <clears throat> no questions, Mr. Chairman. Alderman Onowitz. No questions. Vice Chairwoman Ingracia. No questions. Alderman Spencer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the, oh, so the, so the owner, the, somebody recently purchased this with the intention of doing a, a gut rehab? Yes, exactly. And so it was, I assume, uh, um, purchased from a, pri was it sitting vacant from a private owner? Yep. And I bet that, are the neighbors supportive? Oh yeah, they're ecstatic. Great, Great. sounds good to me. How much is the owner putting into it? Uh, 96000 and the purchase price was 30000 You know what the sale price approximately might be? Probably about one fifty, one fifty five. Isn't that kind of low for that neighborhood? Um, no, that's kind of, I mean, th this is not a particularly large uh, property and it's on, the parcel it's on is only 2,500 square feet or something. Um, they're actually, right now there's probably only like 700 square feet of living space, but they're finishing the basement and making it like a walkout basement in the rear. It's kind of doubling the, uh, the occupiable space in the property. That is pretty small, 700. Okay, here are no other questions. I'll entertain a motion to pass Board Bill 244 out of committee with the due pass recommendation. So moved. Second. It's been moved and a second. Hearing an objection to previous roll, Board Bill 244 passed out of committee with due pass recommendation. Thank you. The next Board Bill we will hear is Board Bill 241 from Alderman Coulter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Board Bill 241, and I've got some photos for you. It's a property on Ann Avenue in Soulard, 919 through 21 Ann. It's on the north side of Pontiac Square Park. Um, we're looking for five years of tax abatement on this pro property. Um, acquisition costs were 85,000. Construction costs are approximately 182,000. Uh, and we're looking at an anticipated sale price of somewhere in the round, around 380,000. <coughs> It's been a bit of an eyesore. We've made a lot of improvements around Pontiac Square Park. There's a couple of um, still vacant properties. This is one of them. Uh, and my next board bill is one of the other properties. OK, any questions from members of the committee? Alderman Villa. No, thank you. Alderman Arnowitz. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Vice Chairwoman Ingracia. Any questions? I just wanted to say thank you for using some discretion in how you hand out tax abatements in your ward. That they're not all ten years. No, and, and you know, we're getting to the point in some of these Soulard properties where we're at five. There's a lot of more people that I'm telling no to nowadays in terms of tax abatement in Soulard. Some projects I think still warrant it, but um, we're we're saying no more than we're saying yes nowadays. Thank you. Okay, Alderman Woman Spencer. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I echo Alderwoman Ingracia's sentiment there. Um, my son plays at Pontiac Park uh, at, in his school, and I can 
see the need for this over there. Um, and it looks like a good project. So. Thank you. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to pass Board Bill 241 out of committee with a due pass recommendation. So moved. It's been moved. I'm moving a second. Second previous row. It's been moved in a second. Hearing no objection to previous row, Board Bill 241 comes out of committee. We do pass recommendation. Next Board Bill is Board Bill 242, sponsored by Alderman Coder. Thank you. This is the other property I referred to around Pontiac Square Park. This property is on the west side of the park and is, um, it's a very cool building. It's, it's two stories. It's got kind of two split balconies. Um, an elderly gentleman lived there for a number of years. I, I, he either passed away or is in a nursing home now. Um, sorry? Board Bill 242, I apologize. Uh, so this is a property that has a lot of potential. It's a big, very noticeable house next to a lot of new construction and recently rehabbed properties. You'll see it's got a really beat up, it's got kind of a carriage house with a, a chicken coop that uh, currently houses a number of stray cats. So I'll be looking forward to not having those stray cats running around the park. My dog doesn't much care for them. Um, at B, this is Be Well, uh, LLC's the developers. We have representative from the company here today. Acquisition costs about 120,000. Uh, construction costs between 350 and 450. I don't know what it will sell for, um, but I, I anticipate it'll it'll be quite a nice house and get a pretty good sales price. And I'm looking for five years of abatement on this project. You say the developer is here? Yes, I'm representative of the developers okay. here. Does she sign up? No, I don't. I think she's just here to answer questions. If you have any. Oh, why don't we hear from the come developer since she's no, here? Sorry, we don't I want her to come all the way down here and spend all that time all just right. to. After you, introduce, give us your name. And your Hi, name. my name's Rita Backstrom, and our office is located in Soulard at 1014 Geyer. Uh, we have been in business since 2005. We used to have an office up on the hill. About three years ago, we bought an office in the Soulard area, and we've just noticed. It's actually a set of, like Alderman Kotar said, three buildings that have sat in disrepair for a very long time. And um, we're excited about the project, but it's a huge undertaking. In fact, I was over there a couple months ago, and I ran into one of the code inspectors who told me that he submitted a picture of one of the homes in a best of the worst <laughs> um, project submittal that they have throughout the state of Missouri. We have a tree growing through the roof of one of the buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, the pipes have frozen and broken in the main building. There's mold throughout it. And uh, the two smaller side buildings are structurally unsound. So it's going to take a lot of work to bring it up. But like the alderman mentioned, it's in a great location. I think it has some great potential. This is for sale. The main building will definitely be rehabbed into a single family home and put up for sale. Okay. I should clarify, sorry, there is a main structure, a sort of side structure, and then the rear carriage house, right? So That's it's correct. actually three buildings yeah. all on one property. And the carriage house, is it detached? I couldn't tell from Yes, the sir. And so it's been used as a chicken coop, right? Yes. And that's popular. People, you, would you like to see it remain a chicken coop? No, sir, I would not. <laughs> I would not. And I would also like to see. <laughs> no chickens in Sular. The numerous stray cats also gone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have any questions from the developer? Okay, Alderman Villa. Are you going to wreck the chicken coop? Uh, that would be our, yes, our prerogative. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'd like to turn that into a single family home. The chicken coop? The alley building. We'd like to wreck the chicken coop <laughs> off the back of it. It's all kind of attached. Yeah, I saw it, but I, I want to make sure I was going to turn the chicken coop down and build a new building uh, or just extend the yard? Then the alley house to make that into a livable unit. Yeah. So there's currently a brick, a beautiful brick oh, yeah. alley house. I think it may have been a garage or a barn at one point. And then the chicken coop's attached to that. The chicken coop will go. The beautiful brick structure will stay and get expanded. Thank you. Okay. I, let me just grab this picture again. Okay. So it's, it looks like it's a duplex. It is currently set up as a duplex, yes. We're going to turn it into a single family. Okay. Aha. Oh. Uh -huh. They really know how to use space in Sular, don't they? <laughs> Talk about density. I, 
was through there a while, a couple, I guess in the last winter, and there's a giant, you know, there's a giant hole in one of the floors and a tree growing out. It's a mess. Uh, Auto woman aggressor. Do you need help with um, trap neuter return for the feral cat population? So my understanding, having talked to one of the cat ladies in the neighborhood, is the, the cats are all spayed and neutered. Okay. There's just a bunch of them. They're not populated. Mm -hmm. They're just a sort of a set population. Eventually, they will need to be trapped. We're not quite there yet. I've called two shelters, and I've called animal control, and they just release them after they're spayed or neutered. Yeah. And I that's, that's what our city law is. Yes, um, and we've caught people feeding them there, which that's doesn't legal. make it easy. Yeah, no, that's legal. If you need if you need help relocating a colony, let me know. Okay, I will. I may take you up on that. Okay. okay. Alrighty, I'll entertain a motion to pass Board Bill 242 out of committee with a due pass recommendation. So moved. It's been a move. Then second. Previous roll. Hearing no objection to previous roll, Board Bill 242 comes out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Next Board Bill, Board Bill 243, sponsored by Alderman Coulter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Board Bill 243 um, is the building the church and old school on the corner of Lafayette. That'd be the southeast corner of Lafayette and Mississippi. Uh, it will be the new home of Lafayette Prep Academy, a charter school currently serving uh, kids aged K through third grade, located downtown. Um, their plan was to always try to move to the Lafayette Square neighborhood. They've acquired um, this church and the adjacent school and are beginning renovate. They've already begun renovations. Um, the acquisition costs were approximately 340,000 for the school. Uh, we're looking at cont total construction costs of about 2.4 million. Um, it's a big space. The neighborhood's very excited about it. I'm asking for 10 years abatement on this project. Uh, the school, once it moves to Lafayette, to, to the new location, will serve K through five, and then eventually will expand to K through eight. Okay, Alderman Villa. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Alderman Arnowitz. No questions. Vice Chairman Ingracia. The um, property owner on this is LPA? Um, the property owner, well, so it's not a nonprofit technically. The property is owned by an entity of UIC Construction, the developer, um, and for financing purposes. and. Lafayette Prep will be a tenant, which is why there will be taxes on the building still. Okay. Um, I sat on the steering committee for LPA before it opened, and I'm really excited about this. Yeah, so this is a you. very exciting project. Alderman Spencer. No further questions. Thank you. I'm kind of curious. Um, why wouldn't the, the school buy the building? If, I believe it has to do with the financing and how much work and the types of tax credits they needed and everything. The developer, I guess, decided to own the building. The developer's guy, I believe, has a stake in the school, and then, Christine, you might be able to speak to this more. Um, both the developer and a number of people on the steering committee decided this was the best course of action. So yeah, it's a corporate entity that owns the school, the, the, the building itself. And you guys, can either, any of you well, speak to that? I, could, I do not know the details on this one, but it's not unusual this arrangement works out because you can't get historic tax credits unless it's owned by a for-profit. Right. Yeah. And so okay. this allows them to get historic tax credits, okay. which I assume they're getting. I do yeah. not know for sure. Oh, state and federal. Are. Well, that makes sense. And, and so that makes it a lot more worthwhile than, than uh, not foregoing the historic tax credits. Right. And the school itself is, is by no means flush with cash no. for a purchase like this. No. Okay. Well, actually, it's, it's a good win for the city because it remains on a tax roll. You said it was a church previously, right? There's a church. And a school, there's sort of the school sort of L-shaped, and then the church, the church is actually on the corner, and the school's sort of L-shaped around it. Was this property originally tax exempt? It wasn't? Okay. No. All righty. Any further questions? Debbie, how does it get back on the, Mr. Chairman, how does it get back on the tax roll? No, I thought it was tax exempt, which means it wasn't on the tax roll. And if it's a for-profit corporation on it, then it would be back on the tax rolls. That's who's going to sponsor the, the charter school. Yeah, UMS, I believe UMSL's the actual educational entity sponsoring the school. But yes, it'll be owned by an entity of UIC development. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to pass Board Bill 243 out of committee with a due pass recommendation. 
So moved. It's been moved and a second. Uh, Hearing an objection to previous row, Board Bill 243 comes out of committee with due pass recommendation. Uh, sorry, Mr. Chairman, so I, I didn't realize that we had a duplicate here. Uh, this was uh, Alderman Coder's last bill. So I just wanted to uh, point uh, out, I think it more. was Alderman Volmer who had a breakout at the back of his little handout, which kind of enumerated the current taxes, what the projection would be. And I thought that was a very nice summary if there was a way we could encourage you know, future bills to include that type of information, it was really helpful to kind of look over. Um, I don't know if SLDC would be uh, sure. amenable to sure. it. Sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah. that would be. Yeah. I think we have all We don't always you know, have them, but. Okay, so Dale, what I'm hearing you saying, you're going to make that a standard practice that you would provide that with each bill. Okay. All righty. Uh, next board bill is board bill 258, sponsored by Alderman Coulter. All right. Board, board bill 258 um, is a, I'm looking for a five year tax abatement. This is a pretty large project um, on the southern side of Soulard at the corner of 9th and Barton. You may be familiar with the Bar D's place. Uh, wonderful little watering hole in the neighborhood. Well, the owner of D's place uh, acquired his building years ago, a couple years ago, and acquired the building next to him. So this is 2401 through 05 South 9th Street. Um, and he's in, the, he would, like, he's in the process of renovating uh, these two big, which were very dilapidated buildings. Um, he acquired them for about 343,000 and we're constr our construction costs are gonna be anywhere between 750 and about 1.1 million. Uh, on these projects, and it will be nine residential units, uh, four one bedrooms, two two bedrooms, two three bedrooms, and then the retail space, which is the uh, which is the bar. Um, currently, so we're looking for five years abatement on this project. Um, it is next door to another major redevelopment that's currently coming online, which is the Polar Wave Building, which is f about 40 really high end uh, rental units that are just starting to be leased currently. So we've seen a lot of activity on that south side of the neighborhood. Alderman Villa. No question, Mr. Chairman. Alderman Arnowitz. Uh, no question. Vice Chairwoman Gracia. No questions. Alderwoman Spencer. No, no questions for me. Okay, yeah. curious, rents. I'd say rents on these for the, um, you know, what's kind of becoming standard in the neighborhood for one bedroom is about 1,200 bucks. Um, Closer to 15 or 16 for probably the two bedrooms a month. Good Lord. <laughs> Maybe more. How can I Could get rent in my neighborhood up there? <laughs> I'll have to start working. It's taking a long time in Soulard. This started in the, you know, the 70s. Wow. Yeah. Um, and this is, again, one of those kind of, we don't have a lot of big eyesores like this left. Um, and you know, I'm really excited that Dan, who's made a big investment in the neighborhood with his bar, who's done very well, um, is undertaking this thing. So it's basically over a million dollar project? Yeah. Okay. And do you know if he's already uh, solicited his contractors? You know, I don't, I, they're already doing some work, so I think he does have some contractors lined up. I don't know who they, well, let's see. Uh, the developers, G.R. Brown and Associates, I don't know those guys. Okay. Um, do you guys, can you speak to that? I want to ask a question about my non-anticipation on this project, since it's over a million dollars. Um, do you know what the minority participation is, Michael? Um, it's a consultant that we've been working with, and uh, the initial figures were, it was one of the $999,000 projects. So we're trying to pin them down on what, what it actually is. When they first submitted, it was an $800,000 project. Um, so they have not contacted uh, MWB, but um, we're trying to make, figure out exactly where the project is in, in their numbers. And, and if, it, if it is above a million, we certainly will make sure they contact. So only if it's above a million that do you make sure that they have minority participants? Because our bill suggests that they have to meet <laughs> 25 Sorry. and 5, right? Those are the goals, but the, the monitoring comes into play when, it, when it's a project over a million. So the compliance okay. happens. Um, and we, we haven't been able, their range has been so wide, we haven't, we're not 
quite sure if it's a million dollar project or not. Okay, but let's suppose it end up being 1.2 million at the end of the project. Is the developer aware that they need to make good faith efforts to achieve those goals? Who they, makes the developer aware of that? <clears throat> the, the consultant uh, is Tim Cholito, who has been involved with a lot of projects over the years and a lot of tax abatement projects, and he's well aware of, of uh, our, our suspicion was that, that it was over a million dollar project and we've been pushing them towards all the compliance requirements, um, but they're still giving us pro formas and trying to figure out what that number is exactly. Okay, for educational purposes, once they complete, before they get their certificate to mm -hmm. qualify for the, the tax abatement, we go, do we go through and say, oh, well, you didn't do it here? Do we have to issue the certificate if they did not comply? Let's say it was 100% no, it was 0% minority participation. Right. We have to come up with, whether it's a million or more, in the beginning, mm -hmm. or our monitoring group is not even going to be on their radar screen. So we're going to have to come to a conclusion on this pretty quickly. But your, your board bills ask all developers to... Right. to mm -hmm respect the goals. So even if it's a $300,000 project, though we're not monitoring what they're doing, mm -hmm. we're still encouraging them to, to meet the 25-5 goals. So it, it, it doesn't mean that they're off the hook completely if it's a small project. It just means that we don't have enough staff to, to monitor right. every project, so we just arbitrarily establish the million dollars. Right, it, because typically if you had a $200,000 project or $300,000, it, it, it does fly off the radar. People are not paying attention, but when people in the community see this large project happening, it's like, wow, you know, and they start looking. I know in my neighborhood they'll start looking. If I did a, you know, even a $500,000 project and they didn't see any minority participation, it would be an issue. Um, but I think at the end of the day, the whole minority participation piece is something that the city needs to work on it, period. Because well, what we need to do is go back to this developer and get a, a, a firmer amount of money involved so we know if we need to trigger the, the monitoring or not. Because, uh, uh, you know, you, you really need to know that up front. Uh, otherwise, as I said, the whole monitoring crew, because you can't wait until the end and then, right. you know, it, right. it just just can't work that way because they the our monitoring group wouldn't know what to do at the very end if they hadn't gotten right. any information at the beginning so do the developers submit something in the beginning yeah before the project whether it's a hundred or two hundred or a million they, they submit something that says we have X amount of participation no they don't do that because we don't uh, when they do that is when we begin entering into a redevelopment agreement. We don't do that on the less than a million dollar projects. Okay. So we don't have much knowledge about what they're doing in less, less projects. So theoretically a developer could say it's an $800,000 project, but it's really a 1.5 because you wouldn't know because no one's monitoring it. it, it that, that is true. Okay. That is true. All right. Although we then see what the building permits are, of course, right. they often apply for a building permit for, for a much less than less sure. You're right. Okay. You're right. And if it is monitored at the end of the project, we're we're not signing off on the abatement until we have a letter from MWB saying they've they've met the goals or made a good faith effort on a project over a million. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Okay, Alderman Villa. Mr. Chairman, may I inquire Dale? Dale, we, we put this kind of the boilerplate uh, minority aspect in all these bills as we speak, do we not? That's correct. That's correct. It's in every bill. I'm so good at talent, I can't find it, but I know it's, <laughs> it's, it's there. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. maybe on page seven or so. Yeah. 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 Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. But, and thank you, all. But again, it, it's a very educational discussion because I had no idea that only if it's over a million dollars that we pay attention. Uh, I mean, we do put it in there, but it could, so basically, if it's less than a million, whatever. I'm not sure I'm happy with that. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to pass Board Bill 258 out with a due pass recommendation. So moved. It's been moved. Second. Second. 
Hearing no objection to previous roll, Board Bill 258 goes out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Next Board Bill is Board Bill 259, sponsored by Alderman Coulter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Board Bill 259, project I'm very excited about, is 2345 Russell Boulevard. That would be the uh, north east corner of Russell and Jefferson over in the McKinley Heights neighborhood on the sort of western edge of, uh, of the seventh ward there. Um, this is a project, it's gonna be a mixed use development re storefront on the corner there where uh, Mr. Ryan O'Neill and his wife are going to run their uh, flower shop, which I believe is called Twisted Willow. Um, it is not necessarily, you know, you can't walk in and buy flowers off the street. It's for, they do flowers for big events and weddings. So there'll be some customer traffic. People will be coming and going to look at their options, meet with uh, Ryan and his wife, uh, but you can't walk in and buy, you know, a dozen roses there. Uh, he bought the building for 105000 um, Total construction cost will be about $325,000. Um, upstairs, they're going to live upstairs. And I, and I don't know if they're also going to, it's gonna be five bedrooms upstairs. It's a pretty big building. Um, we're looking for 10 years of abatement on this project. And the neighborhood's very excited. Uh, I know they've written a letter of support, which I don't have with me, unfortunately, for the project. Alderman Villa, do you have any questions? Uh, Alderman, how they come up with the name Twisted Willow? I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> Alder women are Alderman Arnowitz. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alder woman Spencer. Can I get a motion for Board Bill 259? So moved. Second. Previous roll. Yeah, hearing no objection to previous roll, Board Bill 259 comes out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Have you heard from Rody? Thanks, Next time we'll try to get you your own agenda. We'll hear you on a special day. Of the okay. Day. Okay, go ahead and have, I guess we'll go ahead and have folks come up. I'm doing green. Okay. All right, Board Bill 240, Alderman Rohde. Board Bill 240 is a 4249 Shoto in the Forest Park Southeast neighborhood. <clears throat> the developer is Melissa Taylor, is renovating this uh, two-family residence, and it will actually remain a two-family rental. Um, well, one unit will be rental, and, and the other, the second floor, will be owner-occupied. Uh, acquisition 70,000, total construction 130. Approximate rent a, a thousand per month. It's two thousand square feet, one bedroom, one bath in each unit, with two off-street parking spaces. It's in a MVA B category. It's close to the D area, and just west of a G area to the south. Um, so it has lower than average levels of owner occupancy and, and higher than average levels of subsidized housing. This board bill authorizes a ten-year tax abatement, which is what we've been doing in, in this immediate area. Alderman Villa, do you have any questions? Uh, no, thank you, Madam Chairman. Alderman Onderwitz. <laughs> Alderwoman Spencer. No, this is a 10 year abatement here. Yes. I'll entertain a motion on Board Bill 240. So moved. Second. Previous roll. Hearing no objection to previous roll, Board Bill 240 comes out of committee with a due pass recommendation. <clears throat> Board Bill 272. 
Word Bill 272 is a three buildings, 4214 Shoto, 4131, and 4141 Manchester Avenue, also in Forest Park Southeast. The developer is Donald Bellin, who will renovate all three buildings. Um, the, the two on Manchester will be commercial, and the um, 4214 Shoto will be a two bedroom, one bedroom, one bath, uh, two unit rental housing. Uh, acquisition for all three was 255,000. Total construction, 300,000. Um, uh, Mr. Bellin, as you may know, owns a, a salvage wrecking company and, and uh, we've done several projects with him and he often uses uh, reclaimed and salvaged materials on his on his project so the the actual construction cost isn't necessarily indicative of what goes into the projects because he does a lot more with with stuff uh, materials and lumber that he and artifacts that he already has um, he anticipates creating eight new jobs with this project and Alderman Rohde uh, is supporting a, a ten-year tax abatement Alderman Villa, do you have any questions? Uh, you said, oh, this is the, it's Bell and Wrecking. Mm -hmm. Correct. And, and we've done, I think, three, three tax abatement projects with him over, over the last couple of years. And it, his, his numbers look low, but, but it, it's a lot of sweat equity, and he has, he has crews, his wrecking crews go in and do a lot of the rehab and, and a lot of the materials. That's neat stuff. Right. What is now the quick trip? When that is exactly. Fun. I'm done uh, editorializing now. Yeah. Alderman Arnowitz? No question. Alderwoman Spencer? Uh, no questions for me. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion on Board Bill 272. Hearing no objection to previous rule, Board Bill 272 comes out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Do we know about Workman or, okay. Oh yeah, I'll do Megan's, okay. I'll do Megan's and then mine. <laughs> do you want a chair? You can do it. We'll walk you through it. It'll be fine. This is a good place to do it. <laughs> Uh, 56. I'm going to do green and then mine. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I don't pay attention to what other people are saying. Okay, we'll take up uh, Board Bill 256. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Hand out some pictures. This is uh, 3504 McKean Avenue in Tower Grove East. It's a uh, renovation, renovation of a two-family building that's been gutted. Um, acquisition costs were 19,000. Total construction costs will be 226,682 dollars, with an anticipated sale price of 289,000 dollars. Yeah, this thing does. And this is um, a, a portion of Tower Grove East uh, known as the Wedge, which has seen quite a bit of disinvestment over the years. Um, Alderwoman Green is requesting a 10-year tax abatement. Okay, we'll entertain questions. Alderman Villa. Christine, did you say known as the Ledge? Wedge. Oh, I think you said Ledge. Either way. I've got a Ledge in the 11th Ward. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Really? I'm surprised a member of the WE group has fallen on the dark side and asking for 10 years. <laughs> no, no further questions, Madam Chairman. Um, Alderman Arnowitz. Um, so if, if, if this photo uh, serves me correctly, there's no roof on this building? That's correct. Uh, this is in uh, incredible that somebody uh, would be willing to take this on. Can you give me the name of the developer? I've got a bunch of roofless buildings in the 20th Ward. <laughs> it's fantastic. The developer so, is Timothy Kane. Timothy Kane. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, so I'll uh, entertain a motion uh, to 
pass this board bill out of committee? Second. They do pass recommended. Okay. With hearing no objections to previous roll, uh, Board Bill 256 uh, passes out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, before you now, Board Bill 257, um, 3610 Bamberger, in Tower Grove South. Sorry. Uh, the developer on this is the um, Tower Grove Neighborhoods Community Development Corporation. It's a renovation of a four family into a rental property. The acquisition cost is $50,000. Total construction cost $100,000. Alderman Green is requesting a 10-year abatement on this property. I'll entertain any questions. Uh, Alderman Villa. Uh, no questions, Madam Chairman. Alderman Arnowitz. Uh, so it doesn't appear that we have any uh, photos of the interior of the building. Uh, is this a gut rehab? Not completely gut. Um, Do you want to come up? Sure. sure. Uh, no, it's not. It, I believe it was two months ago. We had another on Bamberger that the, the, their CDC has been doing. So this mm -hmm. is just south of, of Chippewa. And it, it's in rough shape, but they're... On, on the one previously that it was mainly cosmetic um, to try to get rental units in there and, and this, this is a similar one with, with a larger budget. Hmm. Sounds great. So I'll, I'll entertain a motion. To, to, great. Uh, hearing no objections to previous roll. Uh, Board Bill 257 passes out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I now have before you Board Bill 273, which is 3708 Humphrey, also in Tower Grove South. The developer is um, John Fortunato. It's a renovation of a single family rev re residence. Acquisition costs $75,000. Construction costs will be $128,525, with an anticipated sale price of $290,000. Entertain any questions, Alderman Villa? Uh, no questions, Madam Chairman. Alderman Arnowitz? No questions, Madam Chairman. Uh, so, if looking at this photo, uh, I'll, uh, the photos of the back, so this is just, just the uh, property on the left, is that correct? Is it, there's two, two, two homes here in the photos. It's hard to tell, I suppose we're looking at the one on the left. Yes, yeah, exactly, the yellow brick. And what was the acquisition price on this? It was on Humphrey Street. Oh. $75,000. With an anticipated resale price of? 290,000. 290,000. 128,000 in construction costs. Great, and this will be a for sale or is the owner, is the, uh, is this a developer or somebody who's already? Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. typically sells his property. Okay, does he, okay. Looks like a good project to me, so I'll entertain a motion uh, to pass board bill 273 uh, out of committee with the due pass recommendation. So moved. Hearing no objection to previous roll, Board Bill 273 passes out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Um, with your permission, Madam Chair, I, I can stay up here and just do my board bills. So, that sounds like a good plan. Uh, so, um, uh, well, yes. I'm definitely not going to make a comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll now hear Board Bill 277. Uh, <clears throat> Board Bill 277 is 2821 Oregon Avenue in Fox Park. Um, the developer is uh, Daryl Brown with Imani Investments. He has um, rehabbed a number of properties uh, in the Fox Park and Tower Grove East areas. Um, he's working with me um, on a project in the 2800 block of Magnolia and the 2800 block of Oregon, blocks which intersect. Um, we're strategically um, working on these blocks with both market rate and quality affordable housing projects. Um, this is one of the market rate projects that he is rehabbing for us. So he purchased um, this 
property with uh, $2,500 is putting in $125,000 in construction cost with an asking price of approximately $200,000. Wow. And this is a request for a five-year abatement. Okay, we'll entertain questions. Alderman uh, Villa. No questions, Madam Chairman. Uh, Alderman Arnowitz. Uh, I have a question. So, um, from whom was the per property purchased for twenty five hundred? Do, do we know? You know? Do you guys? I, I, he, some of his he's purchased privately, and others he's purchased from the LRA. I apologize. I'm not sure on this one. Um, I think we can probably look that up and get that to you after the meeting, if that's okay. Sure. And it looks like this is a total gut rehab. It is. This is an area that really does need some um, redevelopment. I'm um, encouraged to see such a large amount of money being put into this block of Oregon, and I think that's wonderful. So, great. Thank you. Uh, entertain a motion to pass Board Bill 277 uh, out of committee with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Second. Previous roll. Hearing no objection to previous roll, Board Bill 277 passes out of committee with a due pass recommendation. And with that, um, We'll hear all Board Bill 278. That is, if uh, it's my understanding that Alderman Ortman, let's see. Actually, Christine has another bill. Uh, Alderman uh, Ingrassi, you have another bill. Let's see. Let's hear 232. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman, members of the committee. This is a request for a five-year tax abatement at 2618 um, Lafayette. Um, in this redevelopment area of the Gate District, um, up to 10 years is available. Um, I feel like and I, the SLDC agrees that at this point in time development has occurred to such a point where 10 years is no longer necessary but we are comfortable giving five it's been um, probably about five or six years that this um, one property just has not been able to move um, so Tom McNally with one Main Street who has done work in this area previously acquired the property for seventy thousand dollars is putting two hundred and forty four thousand dollars into the construction cost with an asking price of three hundred and forty nine thousand dollars entertain any questions alderman villa amazing to me they get that kind of money out of it. it's uh that area of lafayette between jefferson and compton is something that i started working on about two and a half years ago when i got elected and have been really um lucky to partner with some great folks in they have uh, infill projects and rehabs that are selling really well. No, uh, no further comments, Madam Chair. No Alderman Ornaments, okay. Um, looks like a great project. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, pass Board Bill 232 with a due pass. Second. Previous roll. Hearing no objection to previous roll, Board Bill 232 passes out of committee with the due pass recommendation. And on. Okay. He, I don't think Boyd is here anymore. Um, I, can, I can do bills for people if they want to do that. Then we'll hold them for the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah. We'll hear boards. Okay, we'll now hear board bill 234. Okay, board bill 234 is 1318 Hodemont Avenue in Hamilton Heights. The developer is um, <clears throat> Lionel Hines. It's a new commercial construction auto repair shop. Acquisition cost $45,000. Total construction cost $75,000. I don't have um, a sale price unless, the, is this developer staying in the? In the space, okay. So he's he's re rehabbing his own space for an auto repair shop. Um, there'll be one full-time job, service and car sales, and Board Bill 235, uh, sorry, 234 authorizes a 
10-year tax abatement. Um, it's in the IMVA bordering on H. Okay, we'll entertain questions. Alder. Alderman Villa, any questions? Uh, no questions, Madam Chairman. Alderman Arnowitz? No uh, is this an ex so this is hard to tell. I suppose these are draw existing uh, drawings of the existing structure. Is this a rehab or is this a new construction? It, it is a new construction. He, uh, Mr. Heinz purchased the building in uh, 2008 and started doing it. He's a mechanic. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, We've been working with him since last spring, okay. uh, at which point he had already demoed the existing building, which was fairly nondescript, very small, and uh, it, it took us pretty much the whole summer working with him on the plans. His budget was really low, but it turned out he's, he was driving the ditch witch that tore down the building, and he, he's done a lot of the work himself. Um, but yes, new construction. New construction, great. Um, so, I suppose we'll hear. A, I'll entertain a motion uh, to pass Board Bill 234 out of committee with the due pass recommendation. So moved. Second. Previous row. Hearing no objection to previous roll, Board Bill 234 passes out of committee with the due pass recommendation. And. Okay. Take a. Take a short recess uh, to decide how we are going to uh, proceed with the rest of the board bills. So we have two. Carol, we, we got three left. Four we left. have, uh, to my counting, we have three left. Oh, uh, uh, Con we have three Ortmans and a Conway. You have three Ortmans? I don't see the third or. Oh, yep, you're right. Four, four left. Three Ortmans and a Conway. It's your, it's, it's your call, Vice Chairman. <laughs> no, it just seemed to be practice. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and do these today. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, okay. okay, yeah, it's your call. I just, I wanted to make sure we were uh, consistent with practice because I've heard it said that you you know you don't you want to make sure you don't pass something out of committee unless the I've alderman has this, affirmatively I've said. Been on this a couple of years and rarely do we let one we do not deal with, with one, but sometimes we'll get a little feisty with, with people just can 
continually not showing up, and I think Dale and these kids know who they are. But yeah. that's, that's up to you know, Jeffrey <laughs> hasn't been chairman of this that, that long. This is yeah, but I would suggest that we go ahead and just this guy. We'll know in the future let Jeffrey get out some guys. Sound good. Okay. This time we're just going to hear them, and then we're going to let people know that they've been in the chair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Yeah, I guess we'll now, now hear Board Bill 230. Who's doing this one, guy? Good uh, morning, Madam Chairman, members of the committee. Um, Alderman Tom Villa from Ward 11, and in this instance, uh, representing the distinguished gentleman from the 9th. And I would ask your favorable consideration for Board Bill uh, 230. Board Bill 230 is a property at 2865 Lump Avenue. Uh, the cost, the acquisition cost was 25,000. The renovation cost are $369,500. And each townhome is going to ha have an asking price of $202,000. Uh, the units are going to have 1,500 square feet, two bedrooms, two and a half baths, and two car garage. And Alderman Artman is seeking five years tax abatement. Alderman Arnwitz, do you have any questions? Uh, no. Alderwoman Spencer? Uh, no questions. I'll entertain a motion on Board Bill 230. Hearing no objection, Board Bill 230 comes out of the committee with a due pass recommendation. We'll now hear Board Bill 239. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Board Bill 239 uh, is in the Benton Park neighborhood. Um, the um, acquisition cost is 15000 The total construction cost is 225000 and they're going to have an asking price of $385,000. Uh, the, the amenities are uh, three bedroom, two and a half bath. Uh, it's 2,700 square feet. Uh, and the two car garage will remain. Uh, the alderman from the ninth is requesting a uh, five year tax abatement. Alderman Arnowitz, do you have any questions? Uh, no, ma'am. Other woman Spencer? Uh, no questions. I'll entertain a motion on Board Bill 239. So moved. You have to second. Second. Previous roll. Hearing no objection to previous roll, Board Bill 239 comes out of committee with a due pass recommendation. We'll now hear Board Bill 231. Oh, no, I'm sorry, 278. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. I would ask for, for the committee's favorable consideration of Board Bill 278 uh, on behalf of the Alderman from the 9th. Uh, once again, this property is in Benton Park. The acquisition cost was 15000 The total construction cost is 70000 It's a three-bedroom home with two and a half baths, 2,624 square feet. There is a parking garage, uh, excuse me, parking pad in the rear of the property for two cars, and the Alderman from the ninth requests a five-year tax abatement. Do you have any questions, Alderman Underwitz? Uh, no, Madam Chairman, thank you. Alderwoman Spencer? This, uh, yes, uh, this property was purchased for $5,000? 15000 $15,000, and currently has tax, uh, annual taxes of, of $189. Very unique uh, little parcel here. The small size. Is, is it? Attached. Is it all connected? Is this part of the? Yes, parcel? it's all connected. Uh, it's so this whole entire piece was uh, a fifteen. It's it been vacant for a while, so I'm guessing that's why the taxes were 
Uh, yeah, I'm familiar with the property. I didn't realize. So this is all one big parcel, one big property that would be developed for set. It could be done under set for seventy thousand dollars. He he works with the S M Wilson, so he's okay. a con works in constru construction, so he'll be doing it itself. A lot of sweat equity. Yes. Okay. I'll entertain a motion on board bill two seventy eight. So moved. Second. Hearing no objection to previous roll, Board Bill 278 comes out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Board Bill 231. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Madam Chairman, I would ask the committee's favorable consideration of Board Bill uh, 231 uh, on behalf of the aldermen <clears throat> from the uh, uh, 8th Ward. Uh, this is the Shaw neighborhood. Uh, the developer is Ronald Seaball Renovation Unlimited LLC. The acquisition cost was $80,000. The renovation cost is two hundred and sixty four thousand two hundred and fifty five dollars and the asking price uh, will be three hundred and eighty thousand dollars it's going to be a single family home with approximately thirty one hundred and fifty square feet uh, four bedrooms three and a half bath uh, second floor laundry a new two car garage and um, Alderman Conway is seeking five years uh, tax abatement. Alderman Arnowitz, do you have any questions? Uh, no questions. Alderman Spencer? Uh, no questions. He I'll entertain a motion on Board Bill 231. So moved. Second. Previous roll. Hearing no objections to previous roll, Board Bill 231 comes out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Thank you, Madam Chairman. We are adjourned. Thank you.